live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and we're joined by David Floyer, who is Wikibon CTO. He's been hanging out in the analyst crowd, or analyst meetings all day today, getting a mega Kool-Aid injection from IBM of uh, software defined and virtualization, and we're going to unpack it now. Um, really, a pleasure, David, having you on. I love these segments. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. You're welcome. So, Let's see, we were here in this very building a couple weeks ago, we heard EMC announce you know, Viper 2.0, separating control plane and data plane. I had said many, many times that week, I asked a lot of people, is it a way to consolidate the stovepipes or is it the future of software-defined storage? And the answer EMC gave was both. Um, but in the near term, it's very clearly a way to consolidate you know, the, the storage silos. Talk about what you heard from IBM, Elastic Storage, what they're announcing. Is it different? How is it different? Both, both companies have the same uh, objectives, the same pressures on them, which is to uh, work out a way where they can continue to sell what they have today, and in the long run, get themselves positioned for a, quote, true uh, software-led storage or software-defined storage. So from that point of view, we heard the same thing this time. We heard things uh, shoring up the uh, short term, some, some good announcements in the flash area, some good announcements in the, um, uh, in the area of uh, SVC. But the very interesting thing uh, that is that they put down a very strong marker for the long term. What, what we in, in Wikibon have termed service and and what they're looking at is a global server SAN, which, if they can pull it off, is going to be fantastic. But that's a long journey and uh, a very ambitious journey. And uh, the thing that worries me more is how do they get volume in the short term to pay for that long journey? So let's talk about server SAN. So server SAN, you're talking about uh, directly attached storage devices at the server level that are connected through some kind of high-speed interconnect and pooled through software uh, to essentially create a global scale-out SAN, correct? Yep. That's exactly right. Okay, yes. and what's the benefit of that? You're eliminating a lot of complexity, presumably, but you're adding complexity too, aren't you? Well, the benefit is that the, uh, the servers and the storage are closer together. So, so for some latency. workloads, you can get late, lower, much lower latency and much further throughput. And the other clear workload where there is a short-term benefit uh, uh, is in uh, areas like um, long-term retention or archiving where you want cheap and, cheap and deep storage. And one of the very interesting things that IBM have put in this mix is a link to LTFS. So that they're in, including tape and the ability to store uh, on disk or on tape uh, completely uh, transparently as far as the uh, user's concerned. So again, a, a very aggressive long-term vision, um, but it's going to need a lot of work to get there. Okay, now let's talk about the components of IBM's software-defined strategy. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a variant of GPFS. Yep. Um, there is uh, a new name, Elastic Storage. Elastic Storage. Right? Yeah. Um, there's some new technologies underneath. Well, there's Watson, right? They're bringing over sort of a mini Watson for, to help with the analytics and maybe data placement and what should go yeah. where. Hmm. Um, there's new technology um, coming out of Haifa. I don't know if they, you, you heard about this, the yeah. Storlets. Yeah. Okay, so they talked about Storlets, which is uh, essentially a software construct, which is an easy way to, to customize the behavior of an object. Sounds like metadata. It's metadata, yes. Yeah. I mean, essentially, and GPFS is particularly good at managing the metadata. Yeah. Okay, and I was saying off camera, also there's a, you know, the, the, the technology from SVC, which you were saying, well, yes, but, but I mean, isn't, that, isn't SVC how IBM's going to virtualize the underlying infrastructure, or did I get that wrong? 
Well, that's one option. Um, the SVC is a great box at hiding, uh, providing its own set of storage services and putting those on top of the uh, arrays underneath it. But if they're going to be successful with uh, uh, the elastic storage or the service end, that has to have its own set of services. It can't rely on another set of services above it. That's, that's yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit. So, so EMC strategy, and I, I'd like to, you know, sorry to harp on EMC, but they sort of yep. laid it out. They said separate the data plane from the control plane. The yep. control plane, or the data plane rather, is a bunch of EMC boxes. Right. Okay, so the, and then they put uh, uh, VPlex in there. That's their sort of virtualization yes. engine, appliance. Yes. yes, Not as mature as SVC, obviously. Uh, IBM's a little different. You don't need to buy an IBM box in order to get those data services. Uh, well, although, the, do the, you? The, the VPlex does not have data services. The VPlex doesn't, but it allows yeah. you to virtualize all the, the, yes. the EMC boxes. Uh, yeah. right? uh, VMAX that, or, v or... VPlex is really active-active. That's what it does for, for uh, uh, Metropolitan. And the SVC can do the same job. Sure, right. Yeah. And it's also a virtualization appliance, essentially. It, it, it? Yes, but, but so, it's not very mature. And no, it's no, it, not it, very, I'm not uh, trying to critique yeah. it, but, but yeah, right. we can point that yeah. out. I mean, SVC's a decade old and yeah, VPlex absolutely. is new, but my yeah. point is that with, with IBM, you don't necessarily have to buy the DS8000 or the, uh, the V7000, whatever but if you want the stack, you got to get the SVC. Right? If you want the complete stack. So this is how is. companies, yeah. am I getting this right? This is how companies, IBM and EMC particularly, have put down products, so that's why we can at least evaluate them, how the legacy sort of storage industry is going to get from point exactly. A to point B. Right. They're going to say, we have stack, Right. right? Our stack is, in the it's case good. of EMC, yes. it's the data yeah. services behind right. a VMAX or a VMX. Yeah. In the case of IBM, it's got SVC. Right. And and it'll take those services and the, it'll put them into uh, 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 as, a, as a set of stacks which is virtualized. They'll put that into the elastic. And then meanwhile, they're working like crazy storage. to build up their native stacks Correct. in the software defined yes. style. So yes. Stu, what's your take on all yeah, this? Yeah, so, so, so David, you know, we've talked a little bit about this and I was at OpenStack last week and compare and contrast, you know, EMC, you know, they've got that Viper. It's interesting, elastic storage, it's elastic cloud storage from yep. EMC. So yep. very similar names, everybody's yep. elastic or agile or, mm. you know, mm. adaptive, mm. you know, seem to yeah. be the buzzwords of, of, of the storage industry lately. So uh, EMC builds all of their services so they have their Viper, and they've got their block, their file, their object, Scale.io is delivering some of it. Um, as opposed to IBM, uh, OpenStack's going to provide some of the services in there, and they even rename one of their products to have OpenStack in it. So, um, you know, is, is it fair yes. to say that it's, you know, EMC is building all of their services, and IBM is leveraging open source a lot more? I'm sure there's a little more nuance than that, but dig that, into uh, that. Uh, uh, that. There are a lot of different ways they could go. So EMC are very clearly coming in at the Cinder level or at the Swift level, and they're allowing the arrays themselves to do the, uh, the services. So their strategy is very clear. Uh, that that's how they're doing it, at least for the moment. And then they've got Scale.io as a, as a background. But all of those come in via Viper to the, the Cinder level or the Swift level. Now, uh, other sets of services, for example, in SolidFire, come through to the horizon where they're using the orchestration and the services from OpenStack itself. Now, IBM, I asked this question of IBM, and they say they're coming in at the moment at the Cinder same level uh, as, as EMC. Um, and clearly, they've got a lot of their own software, and they want to take advantage of their own software and put that as an alternative inside the Elastic So in that cloud. regard, there are more similarities and differences in, in IBM and EMC strategy. Yes. However, yes. my next question then is open. Who's right. talking the open game and who's actually you know, laying down the resources? So, yeah. so if you got a spectrum of total commitment <laughs> and the other end is and, lips, and, marketing and, and, lip yeah, service. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Dave, if I, I, I can comment Where do they on fall? a little bit. So at EMC World, you know, I asked David Goulden directly, what's your position on open source? And he said, you know, fundamentally, open source is not part of our strategy. We want open interfaces. We do want to give customers choice and flexibility, but the federation is the model. Well, Jeremy Burton, to, you know, Jeremy Burton said the same thing. Yeah. Uh, yes. But, the federation being the model, their, their open source strategy is pivotal, okay? Um, 
IBM's is is different. I think I, it, 380 it, contributors to OpenStack. Absolutely. So there's not that's yes. not lip service. Now, no, not at all. I know HP as well. We've got to give HP props to probably even more hmm. committers. I think based on some of the numbers they're throwing around. I don't know. You, you never know. Yeah, it's about 500, I think, yeah, for HP. So, but so. anyway, 380 at IBM. That's a lot, 500. Of, a lot of That's tremendous. some good engineering yeah. resources. Yes. I, I, I didn't hear any EMC. No, no. I, the, they weren't I, I talking numbers. Out, they, I have never heard any I mean, numbers I don't know if EMC. the number is zero. No, no, they, so it's, I, zero. I, I, it's not enough to brag about. Yeah, I, yeah. I did get an answer from EMC on that. They, they have you know, a little bit of work getting on. Uh, they answered where they're you know, working into Cinder in a couple pieces, but you know, no booth at OpenStack, you know, very little. Right, so that uh, says there. to me that it's, it's marketing lip service that, that EMC Absolutely. is giving OpenStack for now. It's deliberately okay. coming in. Because it's a big threat level. to their big franchise, which yes. is VMware. Yes. IBM doesn't have that, right. uh, that to That's lose. Right. They already lost it. <laughs> HP already lost it, so now they get a counterattack. Yes. Okay, so it makes perfect sense. So these are interesting sort of machinations going around on the chessboard. But th there's no doubt, to my mind, that uh, IBM will make Elastic Storage much more open and be much more uh, comfortable with going in eventually at the horizon level, for example, in uh, OpenStack or uh, a cloud, the cloud stack or all the number of other open storage. So OpenStack uh, is a big wild card for yes. the incumbents, mm -hmm. generally, specifically uh, e EMC, I would think. Uh, Cisco as well, I mean, or not so much? I mean, is that well, so NSX is the wild card there? Or? This is one for Stu, actually. Yeah, so, so you're, I mean, you're, Dave, you're we interviewed Lou Tucker at, yeah. uh, at, at, at OpenStack, so if you're asking, you know, how much does open source play in? Um, we always joke, Cisco's about 100 companies, um, and there's a couple of companies inside Cisco that are heavily committed to open source and driving it, but uh, they're fighting against a lot of battles internally there. So, um, today, if you were to ask me which is more open, VMware with what they're doing in NSX, or Cisco, I'd actually have to give Cisco uh, credit because they've got more people involved, uh, you know, had a sizable presence at OpenStack as opposed to VMware took Nicira, uh, which had Open vSwitch and helped create the, you know, what, what the foundation for Neutron, and they've really pivoted to be more open interfaces as part of that, you know, federation strategy. As you said, Dave, Pivotal is the open source piece of it, and uh, you know, EMC and VMware are going to, you know, more provide those interfaces. So. Didn't, and didn't uh, 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 VMware donate Nicera code to OpenStack? So it was the foundation of what's there, but if you look at contributors, there's a lot of companies that are contributing there. And actually at OpenStack, Neutron is probably the most broken of them, and uh, they, they're not blaming the VMware folks or the Nicera folks on this, but uh, it has been, correct, donated as the platform, and everybody's working to fix it. I want to do a quick aside. Uh, David, you were, I don't think you were there this morning when I asked you, I think you were there when I asked, somebody asked about uh, OpenStack and I followed up with the Red Hat mm. question. So it was interesting, we've been following this story, in case you haven't been following this story, Wall Street Journal broke a story last week that said basically that Red Hat was holding back support for its Red Hat Linux distribution on any non-Red uh, non Hat OpenStack distro. Uh, that's not true. Red Hat will support any uh, of its Linux distros anywhere. What it won't do is certify them. It will only, so far, it's only certifying uh, Red Hat's distribution, which for instance Dell uses. Certification versus support. So it'll support narrowly Red Hat Linux, it won't certify the whole OpenStack you know, platform, or product, as we talked about at Wikibon the other day. <laughs> so I asked IBM, I said, what's the story? What's your take on all this? They said, well, you know, um, that's a question that you should ask Red Hat. So very clearly, um, IBM would like to see a collaboration with Red Hat where Red Hat certifies uh, IBM's uh, uh, OpenStack platform. So there's clearly tension there. You, s you heard Martin Fink, or saw Martin Fink, made a quote in the Wall Street Journal that he's, that he's probably rolling his eyes and regretting it, but he said something about Red Hat is bringing a new art form to closed open source. <laughs> Red Hat shot back, well we'd love to see HP do some more in open source. So this, you're clearly seeing some tension amongst the competitors. Red Hat is becoming a competitor of all these guys. Stu, anything you can add to that discussion? Yeah, uh, so it, it, it's a bit complicated in sorting itself out, Dave, but uh, you're right, from a certification standpoint, um, you know, Red Hat is not open to everyone and is kind of using their, you know, 60 plus percent, you know, market share in Linux to kind of muscle in there. But 
the thing that I was a little concerned about is if you talk about putting you know, Red Hat at the guest level on top of a hypervisor, um, they said you know, we certify VMware, we certify Hyper-V, and of course they certified their own KVM, so this is where uh, if, it, if I choose kind of the majority of the environments, uh, they are open, but if, you know, for example, I'm Mirantis and I've got a lot of OpenStack environments and I'm not using Red Hat's KVM, they're saying, once again, you know, Red Hat's trying to you know, muscle their way into Here's this. Here's my so. take on this, you know, and a lot of people will criticize them. Randy Bias was, was sort of, you know, he was going back and forth to me on Twitter the other day. Um, I was sort of neutral on this, but I, 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 I sort of formed my opinion. Red Hat is now a com company with nearly a $10 billion market cap. This is the big time, okay? This is about TAM expansion for Red Hat. They're not going to kowtow and say, oh, well, we're not going to get into your business because you helped us get to become a $10 billion company. No, they're going to compete. They're, you know, this is, this is now game on, right? OpenStack is a, a wide open opportunity for HP, for IBM. You know, maybe it's more of a threat for the, the VMwares of the world, and Red Hat wants a piece of the pie because it's got to continue to grow, it's got to continue to deliver shareholder value. So it's going to be very interesting to see, and why wouldn't you, if you're Red Hat, leverage your unique advantage? You know, Randy Bias can complain all day, oh, it's not in the open source spirit. It's all about, you know, the, the economics of the business, and Red Hat has a great record, track record, on, on open source. I really don't think it's, it's fair to criticize. I mean, it's fair, everything's fair. <laughs> But, but I, I'm not surprised in the least, are you? No, nope, not in the slightest. And, but going back to IBM, IBM have some real mojo in this area. They've been successful in the past at uh, using open source. Uh, they have a good understanding of that business and they have to. I don't believe there's any way that they can maintain market share or grow market share uh, unless they take that, that, that approach. So right. IBM's playbooks, uh, are, are starting to take shape. It's like pound a billion dollars, hmm. go hard on open source, bring in analytics, use some of our you know, unique R&D, like ride Watson's coattails, and then go hard after our install base and, uh, and win that, and suck in new customers as we can. I mean, look at IBM in the big data business. IBM's the leader. The leader in, in that in business, big data, yes, absolutely. Right? Uh, yeah. and so, and they're applying that, and I mean, look at Tivoli. I mean, there's ma ma great success of Tivoli. So even though it's not a lot of, you know, attracting a lot of off-platform IBM, I think IBM's trying to use that same playbook in storage. Now you're seeing it in Flash. So I wanted to give you uh, a, a last word on Flash. Give us the bumper sticker on Flash, and Stu, you chime in. I, I, so uh, the, the, the <laughs> IBM and Flash, they've gone hard after PCIe. They're also going hard after SanDisk and uh, Diablo with the, uh, um, the, the dim form factor uh, in that area. Uh, they've announced a, a low entry Flash, which is nice, uh, trying to get lower down. They've put a lot of compression into all of the Flash. So they've got a good, good Flash story. Where they're missing out is is in having a, a, a flash only, a real flash only array, uh, which can compete with the pures and the, uh, the TMS other is not that. No, it, it, TMS is a really high performance one. So it's great if you have very very high performance Oracle databases. That's what you want at that high end. But it doesn't go after that middle ground. It's not going after the fat middle. It's more expensive. It's, okay. it's, it's a three dollar, it's so who's they're it? up in the six so we get, and ten. We get Pure dollar. with a three billion dollar market value. Uh, EMC's bundling, you know, extreme IO in and being very aggressive about that. You get Violin has been out there. We all know yep. the IPO story. Um, uh, HP is, you know, has announced, uh, but it's still, you know, trying to make inroads in the marketplace. Uh, and you got the, the hybrid guys. Who's, who's the leader? <laughs> in, in terms of, at the moment, in terms of the, the, the fat, Three dollar, uh, uh, three dollar a gigabyte. Uh, Pure is leading. So we're talking about all flash that. arrays. All right flash now. arrays, not, so not, yes. not including Fusion yes. and the other guys. Well, so. then Fusion yeah. is at the. PCIe. IBM has shipped hundred petabytes so far of, of, of flash. I don't know how that compares. The EMC, I think, seventeen. Well, they've got a lot quarter. of server. They've got a lot of server stuff. So they that's, can that counts, right? In that. Yeah. Stu, yeah. I'll give you last word. Yeah, uh, and I, I have one more question for David after I finish. But on the flash piece, you know, TMS might be hitting the high end, uh, but from a revenue standpoint, uh, you know. 
EMC claimed that they had leadership with, I think it was $67 million last year. Um, and when I'm talking to a couple of IBM people behind the scenes, they said, well, you know, wish I could share what my division is, but uh, I don't know that IBM, that, that EMC is still the leader. So, um, you know, definitely uh, it, to, trying to see, what, you know, the flash market sorts itself out between the hybrids and the all flash and everything else. So the, the last thing I had for you, Feels Dave, like the American League East. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's a great analogy, when, Dave. When, when you're talking about SSDs, yeah. then clearly, the EMC with 30% of the market has a huge Yeah, yeah, sure, because they got the incumbent installments. In, in, right. So, 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 incumbent so David, the, the theme of the show is infrastructure matters. So we've been talking about modern applications and you know, cloud and everything else. Does infrastructure matter, and if so, why? <laughs> You've got to have an infrastructure which doesn't get in the way and can offer you whatever it, the application requires. At the end of the day, they said it, and I really believe it, workloads count. Workloads are what matter. You've got to have an infrastructure which is fungible and flexible enough so that you can create the most cost-effective infrastructure for that particular workload. Okay, I think the equipment's overheating. Smoke <laughs> is coming out of the boxes. We've been going all day here. Um, all right, we're going to pick it up tomorrow. Uh, Jamie Thomas is going to be on. We've got more practitioners. A big focus of this year's Edge is the customers. We love talking to the customers, getting their case studies. Uh, so David, thanks very much for coming on. Stu, thank you for all your co-hosting. John Furrier is flying in. He's probably landed by now. Let's see, uh, any minute. So we'll see him uh, tonight and he'll be uh, co-hosting with me tomorrow. So uh, join us, we start off at uh, 9.45 Pacific time tomorrow. And um, so that's it for tonight. Day one is a wrap. Thanks for watching everybody. Uh, go to crowdchat.net slash IBM Edge. Check out the crowd chat, we've been running that all day. And uh, hit us up on Twitter. Thanks for watching, we'll see you tomorrow.